Hello everyone, it's your Peacekeeper, and it's time for the next video in our How to Play series on the Japanese cruiser line. This is the Tier 6 Aoba class cruiser, and if you're doing a double take because this ship looks surprisingly like Furutaka, don't worry, we're going to get there. The Alba class cruisers were a class of two cruisers originally intended to be built as Furutaka class cruisers that skipped the earlier forms of the Furutaka class and went straight to the latter form of Furutaka. The two ships are Alba, sorry, Alba and Kinugasa, and both ships were launched in 1926. The Alba class cruisers, as I said earlier, began their life in their design phase as Furutaka class cruisers, but the decision was made in 1924 to launch the ships with the new twin 20 centimeter turrets on the ship instead of the six single 20 centimeter turrets as on Furutaka and Kakao. This meant that they saw redesigned superstructures to handle the changes in the location and the guns. Beyond that modification, though, that was made at their launching, Aoba and Kitugasa basically retained the Furutaka class's hull and machinery layout, and are otherwise identical. In 1938, after successfully petitioning the countries in the London Naval Treaty, Japan was authorized to modernize their cruiser fleets to compete with the numerically superior U.S. Navy cruiser fleets. The 20-centimeter guns were replaced with 20.3-centimeter Mark II guns, the bridge was heavily modified to that of Furutaka, and the machinery was all converted over to being an oil-fired boiler setup. All of this added a little bit in weight, which forced them to add torpedo bulges to help balance out the ships. In terms of service history, Aoba participated in the invasion of Wake, invasion of Guam, Battle of Coral Sea, the Battle of Savo Island, and the Battle of Cape Esperance. At Coral Sea, Aoba remained on station with Kakao to cover the retreating convoy of Japanese soldiers, while Kinugasa and Furutaka escorted the damaged carrier Shokaku back to truck. At the Battle of Savo Island, Aoba fought alongside Chokai, Furutaka, and Kakao in the sinking of several U.S. ships in a night battle, where she only received light damage. She would not fare so well at Cape Esperance, though, as U.S. forces there were able to cross the T of the Japanese cruisers and severely damage a large number of them, including Alba. Her bridge and number three turret were completely destroyed, and her second turret was knocked out. Four of her boilers were also damaged and had to be taken offline. Admiral Goto was mortally wounded, in addition to 80 other crew members. Alba was ordered back to truck and then back to Cure to be have the damage repaired even further. While there, she was severely damaged by USB-17 bombers bombing the naval base. The bombs hitting her caused two Type 93 torpedoes to detonate, and if it wasn't for the actions of the crew in beaching the ship, she would have sunk. She would be raised, repaired, and sent back to truck, and then back to Kure, where she was hit by a torpedo from a U.S. submarine en route back. During an air raid on Cure, once she had gotten back, she was sunk, settled on the bottom of the, the harbor, and then turned into an anti-aircraft barge because Cure is actually a really shallow harbor. A lot of these ships just barely make it into there. She settled down so that her main deck was still above the waterline, and they just lined the whole deck with uh, 25 millimeter guns and used her as an AA barge. Finally... She would be damaged again during an air raid on Cure in 1945, where she basically was sunk permanently. Her bow was blown off, and her uh, anti-aircraft bar barge duties were finally removed as she was just damaged beyond repair, and they couldn't utilize her in that capacity anymore. Kinugasa served in those same battles, but would go on to fight at Guadalcanal after all of those, where she would be sunk by aircraft in the USS Enterprise and Marine Corps Avengers based in Guadalcanal. She was hit by a bomb, which killed her captain and caused the ship to begin to list. After more near misses, she began flooding more heavily. Finally, her engine and steering were taken out and the ship began to capsize, then sank. In terms of their in-game play style, the Alba class cruisers, uh, you know, they basically mirror Furutaka in Furutaka's final hull upgrade, and that shouldn't come as any surprise. The ships are basically identical in terms of their real-life capacities, so it's no surprise that they are identical here in-game. The problem with that is that, well, 
You basically have Furutaka at tier 6, which means that you have tier 5 armor at tier 6, and a rather large citadel. On the upside, though, Furutaka and Aoba as well were basically very good long-range cruisers with good fire-starting capabilities. And even though that she is really good at those long-range things, she still has the 10-kilometer torpedoes, but unlike Furutaka, we lose those favorable torpedo arcs because of this giant pillar right here. And you're going to see that in the battle video, that the... Alba's tor uh, torpedo arcs are absolutely terrible. In terms of other differences between Alba and Furutaka, you gain 1,200 hit points in the final hull upgrades. She also gets improved anti-aircraft, an additional kilometer of gun range, a half knot in top speed. She gets access to the fourth upgrade slot to improve rudder shift time, engine acceleration time, or decrease the fire and flood repair time. And she is also slightly more maneuverable. Let's talk about stats. In terms of hit points, she has 31,900 hit points, up to 105 millimeters of armor hidden in the belt behind the bulkheads here. And uh, her torpedo, she does have a torpedo damage reduction of 4%. The main battery consists of uh, three turrets, with two guns per turret, they are 203 millimeters or 8 inches. They have a 14.9 kilometer range, 11 second reload time, 31.6 second 180 degree turn time, 21% fire chance, and 3300 damage in terms of HE shell damage, 4700 damage in terms of AP damage. She does have a secondary battery. This is going to mirror that of Furutaka. They are four single 120 millimeter guns. They also serve in the anti-aircraft capabilities. And uh, they do have a 5K firing range, which is not bad if you wanted to actually buff this thing into a true uh, a secondary thing. Not that the secondaries on this are excellent at all. They're not. In terms of torpedoes, she does have the same 10 kilometer 59 knot torpedoes that do 16,267 damage. However, the firing arcs are absolutely terrible and she still only has eight total, two quads uh, in total, one per side. In terms of anti-aircraft defense, she has 15 dual 25 millimeter guns, two triple 25 millimeter guns, and four single 120 millimeter guns. That AA circle starts out at 4.5k, and this is going to be with none of the uh, range-increasing abilities on the captain or on the uh, ship. Although you could boast that out just a little bit further, there's really no point as any aircraft on Japanese cruisers, at least in these lower tiers, definitely not worth it. Top speed of 35 knots, 710 meter turning radius, rudder shift time of 5.2 seconds. That's going to be with the rudder shift upgrade. Detection range by sea of 10.3 kilometers. That is going to be with Concealment Expert. Detection range by air of 6.2 kilometers. In terms of upgrades, sticking with Main Armaments Mod 1 for right now for the 20% reduction in your main battery and torpedoes becoming incapacitated, increasing their hit point pool by 50%, and decreasing the time it takes to repair them by 20%. In the second slot here, oh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1. We can... That's uh, not a bad choice either. I, again, AA, really not the strong suit. Secondary is really not the strong suit. Uh, that's the reason why I'm sticking with main armaments mod one. Back to the second slot here. You can see I'm running aiming systems mod one for the 7% reduction in dispersion of your main battery shells, plus 20% to the torpedo tube traverse speed. The secondary battery stuff, really not all that important, but it does increase their range by 5% and decrease their dispersion by 5%. Uh, in terms of other viable options, I really only see AA Guns Mod 2 as a viable option that's going to push out your anti-aircraft gun range an additional 20%. But quite honestly, again, Japanese Cruiser AA, really not that strong, and I don't recommend specking this ship into AA. In this third slot, uh, Propulsion Systems Mod 1, in my opinion, is the go-to button choice here that's going to reduce the chance of your engine becoming incapacitated by 20 percent as well as decreasing the time it takes to repair it by 20 percent honorable mention here to steering gears mod one which is basically the same thing as propulsion mod one but for your steering gears 
Don't recommend damage control systems mod one. Uh, it just doesn't have any real effect on cruisers in my experience. Still get set on fire way too easily. I'd much rather have extra protection for my engine or rudders. In the fourth and final slot here, I'm running Steering Gears Mod 2 for the 20% reduction in the rudder shift time. Uh, the rudder shift time without it is like right around 8 seconds or so. I really am not all that comfortable with an 8 second rudder shift time on a cruiser that is this soft. Um, I, I much prefer the much faster 5.2 second rudder shift time, which is why I'm running this. If you are more interested in camping in smoke or camping behind islands, uh, Propulsion Systems Mod 2 definitely has some advantages, and that's going to decrease the time it takes to reach full power, as well as um, increasing your engine power when the ship starts moving. Basically, this only applies to the negative 6 to 6 knot range, uh, anything after that, it really doesn't make any big difference in terms of speed. So it really only helps when you're moving very slow. Uh, in terms of ammunition uh, consumables, there's really no new consumables here, although you do have a choice between defensive fire and hydroacoustic search. At tier 6, carriers are still quite common. And while your AA isn't, you know, USAA, especially not at tier 6 where we have Cleveland, which is just a monster in the anti-aircraft department, uh, your defensive fire consumable is still useful for spreading out dive bombers and torpedo bombers. Less likely to have ships get hit by large numbers of torpedoes when, when it's active. That's definitely the only reason I would recommend taking it. If for whatever reason you're divisioned up with somebody and they don't want you to take it, hydroacoustic search, you know, it's not too bad. Four kilometer detection range on ships, almost three on torpedoes. It's not too shabby. So that's that. Let's talk about a battle video while watching said battle video. This battle is a tier 6 battle. It has two carriers on each team and the map is straight. Yes, I am pink. And the explanation for that is because in a previous battle to this, I had launched a set of torpedoes. Eh, nearest teammate to me was like a kilometer in front of me, but there was this Mutski out running up front that was headed in the exact opposite direction of where the torpedoes I launched. I launched them at a target that was approaching us at a pretty good pace, and I knew that they were going to get there. All of a sudden, he turned around and decided, well, I see these torpedoes, but I'm not going to try and avoid them, and ran right into both of them, sinking himself. Uh, we ended up losing that game, coincidentally enough, but uh, nonetheless, I was extremely frustrated by it because, quite honestly, he was nowhere near where those torpedoes were at when they were launched. He made a 180 degree turn, turn around, had plenty of time to see them, and didn't. And it's not like he was anywhere near where I launched them. He was off screen. I couldn't even see him when they were launched. How he ended up hitting them, I, uh, bad luck, I guess. But that's enough of making excuses. The map is straight. This isn't a particularly friendly map for cruisers, but because we are top tier and the number of battleships is relatively low, it's not a big deal. There's those torpedo arcs I talked about. Basically, you have to expose your entire broadside to use them, making them absolutely useless for charge torpedoing. To use them as charge torpedoes, you basically have to run 100% past the ship and launch them after that. And that can be extremely dangerous with how soft this ship is, especially when you're going up against battleships. Uh, basically, they have 10 kilometers in range. If you have concealment expert on your captain and you're running a camel that increases your concealment, you can basically launch these things from stealth so long as the target is approaching you and use that to your advantage. And I've done that a couple times in other videos. I don't think we get there in this one, but... A quick thing to remember here, at Tier 5, lots of light cruisers, and you'll see here we've got ourselves an Emerald that's sitting out at our max range. He's turning away. You notice we loaded up AP. we got a Citadel hit anyway. And knowing what ships you can overmatch the bow on is extremely important. You can see here I'm mashing the WAS and D keys here trying to... Avoid the incoming fire from this Omaha. It succeeds in this, this bat, uh, sorry, that salvo. Uh, doing not a whole lot of damage in terms of AP, but look at what he does. He opens up his broadside to us like, that's a paddling. You're in like the softest cruiser in the world. 
and we managed to only get three overpens that which by the way did 4300 damage <laughs> whatever all right so we launched another set of torpedoes here and all of those uh, AP shells managed to bounce on that Omaha, so it's time for us to probably switch here. Got to avoid these torpedoes from this Mootski. We definitely don't want to... Oh, he's going to continue going broadside. Well, in that case, we'll just paddle him. There's two Citadels for 10k. <laughs> we're going to turn just a little bit, but you'll notice we're not going max speed here. So these torpedoes are pretty much non-threat. We've got plenty of space to avoid them. We're going to turn around now, and we're going to kind of head back up towards the middle. And the, the whole premise behind that is we are up here, and we are the focus of the enemy, which is why I'm on fire in a cruiser. By the way, really loving these new battle animations, the, uh, the new smoke plumes and the shell splashes. They're pretty nice. I'm really glad that they put forth the effort in doing that. I, I really hope that we see better improvements. Like I said, I'd like to see just a little bit more in terms of uh, lingering in the main battery smoke effect, but eh, it is what it is. You know, they're, they're working to improve it and keep uh, resource utilization at a minimum, so we can't fault them too much. So we are down here pretty much by ourselves. Hey, look at that. No damage done from HE from a battleship. Must have hit my turret. Hey, look, there it is again. So this New Mexico is sitting broadside to us. Cruiser AP, especially 8-inch cruiser AP, definitely can have a, a, a good effect on target. You can see here we did about 3K in damage. Probably would have gotten about the same, maybe a little bit more in terms of actual HE damage. Oop, yep. Saw that one coming a mile away. So the, yep, okay, so lots of HE coming in at us. We've switched back to AP because broadside Omaha, that's a paddling. Ah, now he's not broadside. How rude. Okay, what about this Emerald? Well, he's exposing his broadside. We are angling away as best we can. And, oh, 2400 damage. <laughs> Managed to survive that salvo. <laughs> I'm, I'm being kind of taunty. <laughs> so, okay, so we're going to continue. We're going to basically run away here, but we're not going to give up fighting because, well, there's 9,400 damage and two citadels to a broadside emerald. Remember, that's a paddlin. Eight-inch guns. Definitely don't mind broadside light cruisers. Basically going to destroy you. And we got a torpedo hit over there on, uh, on the, one of those battleships over there. I don't know which one it is, but look, we've got an emerald and an Omaha making love. That was the Koenig that was over there. So the emerald, the Omaha, they're over there making love. Yeah, we got an overpen. Not a whole lot of damage in overpens. But you can see we're up to 52,356 damage already. And we've pretty much only used AP this entire battle. Don't worry, we're going to get there. <laughs> emerald is... Uh, well, he's repairing and he's coming around this other way, so we're going to put some shots out where I think he's going to come out. And a nice smoke here. I think that Genevni is just uh, just broken enough line of sight there to, to take me out of the, their line of fire. We've got some battleships here in front of us. That's definitely going to help us out here. And we're going to use our stealth to kind of reposition ourselves. In terms of overall battle play... Um, Right now, things are okay. We, we have a ship advantage on them. They have a cap advantage, but no points advantage in that yet. Our carriers haven't abandoned us. They seem to be doing a decent job of actually taking care of things. And look, Broadside Emerald. Okay. Not one to take, you know, take those shots lightly. So we're going to go ahead and shoot it, and he disappears. You know, he's, under, he's behind smoke, and we miss. Well, some days you swing and you get home runs, and some days you swing and you get strikes. So that was definitely a strike, not a home run. Definitely going to start pushing over towards B, but really where I'm trying to get to is these islands over here. Now this Emerald, you know, he's, he's charging straight for us. He's coming right for us, but we have 8-inch guns. Fear not, for we have 8-inch guns. And 8-inch guns, believe it or not, 
Oh, now he's going broadside. Well, we're going to stay angled to him, and the reason for that is quite simple. Also, if you haven't noticed, I went ahead. Yep, there it goes. So he got Citadel. If you didn't notice, I also popped my defensive fire consumable, and we we're going to put torpedoes down in the middle of that cap over there. The defensive fire, you know, we only shot down one aircraft with it. Not a whole lot to write home about, but we probably scattered that enough that we can go ahead and claim a victory, in my opinion, in my book at least, for that. Okay, if shots fall behind us. Ugh, just barely clipped that emerald, and actually that probably saved us more than it hurt us because the emerald, uh, neither one of us got damaged, but the shots fell ahead of me. And now that we're at long range, we can really exploit this ship's long range fire spamming blowtorch -ness. Yes, I said it. Blowtorchness. That's a new word. Uh, it's really not. Don't look it up in the dictionary. I promise you it doesn't exist. So this Iron Duke, yes, Royal Navy battleships. This Iron Duke is on fire. And you can see we did about 2300 damage to him with that salvo. Um, not exactly earth shattering, but we make a bit of a mistake here. Uh, more than a bit of a mistake. We beached ourselves. I think they call that a Notzer, right? Wasn't it Notzer who patted, who uh, who had that as his thing? Yeah. So at this point, I'm really counting down the time at which it's going to take for those shells to get here and for me to die when very light damage. <laughs> oh, awesome! We managed to sneak back into stealth because into stealth because awesome sauce. Alba's stealth is really quite useful, especially at this tier. You know, 10.3 kilometers isn't exactly earth shattering in terms of stealth. You're definitely not a destroyer. But when it comes down to actually, you know, putting that to use, that there's a pretty healthy range there at which um, you can get close to ships to actually effectively engage them. Now, we've got ourselves an island here. I'm going to slam it on the brakes, praying that those shells miss. And they do. That doesn't mean that we are scot-free here, though. We definitely need to pay attention. Looks like the Iron Duke just repaired his his fire that he had, so we're going to continue to spam our HE at him. Now, looking at the overall flow of the battle map, they have definitely strung hard into C down here. We've managed to cap A, and our forces are kind of split on this line, basically running from the northwest corner to the southeast corner. Not always bad, not always good. Uh, the Iron Duke burned his damage control party on that fire, which means we need to start him on fire again. And a thousand damage. Got six shell hits in there. The problem with what we were experiencing is we hit his turrets. Now, the Iron Duke does not have the big superstructure that the New Mexico has right there, but it's not enough to stop him from starting on fire again. And this New Mexico, you know, he's on fire. Tried to shoot at him. He's just a little bit too close to us now. We got to make up our mind on how we're going to handle this because, um, well, basically, if, if we don't set ourselves upright, we're going to end up dead. There's enough battleships on this end of the map that my life is going to be miserable if I don't plan this correctly. So we're going to wait for just a little bit longer for some of these ships to kind of uh, skedaddle get off the get get a get behind uh, you know other cover and then we're going to make our move as they get distracted with other ships now this iron duke is still looking for me he's a little bitter i can tell and i can understand why basically he got rid of one fire and then promptly got set on fire again not my problem man Better you now he's on fire twice, three times. <laughs> uh so oh no, just twice. Okay, so he's got two fires. Maybe we can add a third one to the mix here and end his misery and suffering. We are up to eighty-two thousand damage. And if you can't tell, I I do enjoy playing Alba. I think you know, in terms of overall gameplay, I think she's a pretty solid tier six cruiser. She's about the anti Cleveland as you can get. She's a fire starter through her, you know, raw fire starting capabilities. And there's light team damage again. 
Uh, her overall ability to start fires is really where her strengths lie, and it's not in her rate of fire, her ability to just constantly spam HE. Uh, her a AP, you saw, it's fairly useful. We got six Citadel hits up against uh, Omaha and an Emerald, including a sinking of it. AA-wise, not nearly as good as Cleveland, obviously because not US, but not, not awful either. There are definitely worse ways to use an AA, you know, ship with AA. We've got defensive fire that we can pop to help scatter aircraft, which is extremely useful, even if itself doesn't shoot down a whole lot of strike aircraft. Um, so overall, I, I do enjoy this ship quite a bit. I definitely find Cleveland to be a far better ship for me play style wise. It just seems to resonate with me a little bit more. Maybe I will like Mogami then and her awesome guns. Okay, so we did uh, about three grand there to this Bogue, which has showed up, and that's that's fine by me. Let's, let's continue and engage. Maybe we can get rid of him and get him off this map. That would be fantastic. Eh, maybe. We're up to 90,000. No, of course not. Why would we, right? So, uh, big shell fire off in the distance. Cram the rudder over. This can only mean one thing. Incoming shellfire. And he misses! Swing and a miss. <laughs> um, yeah. I I don't want to call that predictive, but when I saw that on the in the corner of the binocular view there, I had a feeling it was coming my way. I'm a low health cruiser that automatically makes you a massive target. Definitely got to be paying attention to that if you end up popping up on somebody's radar, for lack of a better phrase and plan accordingly with your WAS and D keys. Unfortunately, um, we are not going to be able to take out the Ernst Gade up there, which is uh, a problem for our Bogue, but hopefully, you know, there's a battleship up there. We got two carriers, we got a cruiser that's headed that way. I think they can handle this if planned accordingly. We've got other problems. We got ourselves a Koenig down here that definitely needs to go away. And somewhere is Zuiho. Speaking of, there she is. Now I'm kind of partial to her sister Shoho, but that's just me. Probably because she was my first aircraft carrier in Cancole. But um, Zuiho definitely pops up on their radar at about the wrong time. <laughs> Get ourselves a cap assist down here. We started Zuiho on fire. She burned her damage control party right away. And now she's on fire twice. Surprise! It's almost like the Battle of Coral Sea. Except for you're not Shoho, so that doesn't really work. Switch to AP temporarily here just to kind of see what we can get. Hey, look, a citadel and an inconvenient island to, well, take out the ship before I get there. And we're back at this long-range firing game again. The Koenig, you know, very accurate gunfire. Uh, saved by that island there, if I had to guess. But not accurate enough to where he's going to be able to escape the wrath of Japanese 8-inch high-explosive shells. We are up to 110,000... 280 damage here. Only one kill, one aircraft sink, seven Citadel hits, so AP definitely showing its strength at this tier. You are the only cruiser at this tier that has eight inch guns. And yet again, another salvo incoming from the Koenig. Now the key to dealing with these uh, battleship salvos like that, well, for one, going out of max range to disappear and come back, that obviously helps. But uh, angling away, it tends to actually really confuse people. Uh, it makes it very difficult for them to engage you. And then on top of that, any rudder movements that you make at those ranges definitely also help. So we've slowed down just a little bit to avoid getting uh, popped here at the edge of the map. But he's only got 3,400 hit points left. Can we... 20... Oh, well, down he goes. So, overall, not a bad ship at all, the, you know, for being a tier 6 Furutaka and having all the problems with it, she's actually quite a solid ship to play. Uh, 1,842 in base XP, there was over 115,000 in damage, 115,725, only the one kill. Long ways to go on that team killer status, though, but uh, overall, not a bad ship uh, to grind through. Definitely worth grinding through. It helps you out definitely with Miyoko at tier 7. 
I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for watching.